जयति शिवल्ल भार्यो जयति च विठलेश्वर प्रभु श्रीमान पुरुषोत्तम तैश्च निर्दिष्टा पुष्टि पद्धति जयति जय श्री कृष्ण टू ऑल फ्रेंड्स आई एम हियर टू टॉक अबाउट अ स्पेसिफिक सब्जेक्ट मैटर रिलेटेड टू शिवल्लभाचार्य हुब्लिश द पुष्टि संप्रदाय there has been some misconceptions some false accusations and allegations against shivalabhacharya ji's character questioning the vallabhacharya ji's character portraying the wrong facts about shivalabhacharya by a certain faction or a group of people outside of the vallab sampraday and before i delved into the details of this specific subject matter i wanted to start off with describing a specific human emotion called as envy or we also say it as jealousy envy is an emotion which occurs when a person lacks another person's superior quality achievements or possession and either desires it or wishes that the other lacked it bertrand russell says that envy is one of the most potent causes of unhappiness and also may lead them to inflict false accusations and allegations on others to reduce their status and so one such example of envy is practiced by a particular faction or a group within chaitanya sampraday it seems this particular group only and not the whole chaitanya sampraday as a whole are envious of the divine attributes of shivalabhacharya and has been floating around several misconceptions false allegations in their literature social media various online discussion forums for example in hinduism.stackexchange.com and i'm not sure really what could be the agenda underlying or if the agenda is actually to proselytize them or others into their own sampraday i am absolutely not sure about that but what i am very sure about is i am a strong proponent of interfaith harmony and maintain maintaining the world peace i am a strong believer in introspection and working towards continuous self reflection and improvement and thus i do not get involved in the business of other sects religions or sampradayas having said that i am an ardent follower and disciple of mahaprabhu shivalabhacharya who established the pushti sampraday and thus it becomes my duty to defend shivalabhacharya when someone disturbs the peace and harmony between the two sampradays by false allegations against shivalabhacharya so it's my duty to self defend bring up this topic to the general audience critically analyze the facts and present the correct interpretation as far as shivalavacharya and pushtimarg is concerned i am here to talk about several myths on shivalavacharya and false allegations leveled against shivalavacharya in his in his character as de as described by only a specific group within chaitanya sampraday seems like this group of people has a single point agenda to malign shivalabhacharya ji's character due to their covetous feeling towards shivalabhacharya ji's excellent and divinely attributes this particular group of people has developed an unprovoked hostility towards shivalabhacharya and has heard the peace and harmony between both the sampradays and is not in the spirit of the cordial relationship that actually shivalabhacharya mahaprabhu and shri chaitanya mahaprabhu shared when they were in the, when they manifested on the earth 
So I speak to you all in the capacity of being the disciple of Shivalabhacharya and express my opinion based on my study and understanding of several texts of Chaitanya and Vallab Sampradaya. I'm not an official spokesperson of Vallab Sampradaya or neither I am a guru nor belong to any religious organization. I think it's my pious duty to present the facts, defend against false allegations, bust myths, and answer the doubts related to Shivalabhacharya in a systematic form via this video. Again, I have high respect for Shival, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his absolute devotion towards Lord Krishna. But at the same time, I'm committed to an unbiased, unprejudiced analysis of the facts. The goal is to maintain harmony and cordial relationship between both the sampradayas. The opinion expressed in this video is purely mine. Before we get started, systematically taking up all the points, all the false allegations and misconceptions and presenting the facts on Shivala Bhacharya, I'd like to start the session with the Shanti part, reciting the Shanti hymn or Shanti part in Ved. Let's start with that Shanti part. Bhadram karne e bhishnu ya madheva bhadram pashe bhaksabhar yadatra Sthirai rangai istushtu bhagge sastanu bhirgya se madheva ki tanyadayuhu Shataminu sar With that, let me share my screen. Let me share the presentation and we'll go one by one, clearing the misconceptions on Shiva Labhacharya. I have given the title of this session as Exposing Inconsistency Fallacies in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, as originally written by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, who belonged to Chaitanya Sampradaya. And before I get started point by point covering the topics, I just like to give a quick overview of what I'm going to cover. A specific group of people, as I mentioned before, within the Chaitanya Sampradaya is operating under the agenda to malign the image of Shiva Labhacharya by forging false stories and allegations on how Shiva Labhacharya was and how was he rebuked by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu how Ch Sri Chaitanya was superior to him and upon to an extent of claiming that Sri Vallabhacharya was in fact the disciple of one of the disciples of Sri Chaitanya. Such stories are nothing but a pure lie and untruth backed by a deep conspiracy and hatred towards those who try to become an ecstatic divinity of Lord Krishna. They have managed to manipulate the historical facts through their literature, as done in one of their texts known as Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, written by Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. And it seems such group of people believes in claiming and obtaining the exclusion, exclusive possession or control of division towards Sri Krishna. And that 
and thus believes that they own the sole right in performing the Krishna devotion and that others can't match their devotional stature. It seems that such people believe that they have monopoly in Krishna devotion and thereby. Let me clarify very categorically. Lord Krishna and the devotion towards Lord Krishna can never be anyone's monopoly since Lord Krishna himself says in one of the Upanishads saying, Nayamatma cha pravachane na labhyo na medhaya na bahuna shute na yamai vai shavrunute te na labhya. I am achieved by those who I wish to achieve me. Thus, it's pure delusion to try to monopolize the Krishna Bhakti. In this session, I will be exposing systematically each and every false allegations and claims that Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami has leveled against Shivalabhacharya in his text. And in fact, point out mutually contradictory inconsistencies within his own text, making the entire text questionable for its, for its validity and not being able to present the facts without any prejudice. Let's get started. So as per Krishnadas Kaviraj and Varshabhani Dait Das, who, com who commented on Krishnadas's original Chaitanya Chattamra text. As per both of them, Shivalabhacharya met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and insisted to listen to his insisted to listen to his commentary on Shivalabhacharya Shiva, wrote. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu denied to listen to his commentary and further upon seeing the excessive ego and pride of Shivalabhacharya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rebuked him for writing an independent commentary on Sri Bhagavat Mahapuran and not following Sri Swami, who is one of the commentators, early commentators of Sri Bhagavat Puran. Further, they say and claim that Sri Vallabhacharya also requested Gadadhar Pandit, who is the disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to be his guru. And after not getting enough respect in Chaitanya Sampradaya, Shivalabhacharyaji left the Chaitanya Sampradaya to accept Vishnu Swami Sampradaya. These claims are absolute false and are filled with mutual contradictions and inconsistencies, both from the historical facts and the other texts written within the Chaitanya Sampradaya perspective. Shivalabhacharya wrote the commentary on Sri Bhagavat in the later part of his life. After completing several works from, for example, Tattvartadit Nibandh, Shodas Granth, Bhashya on Brahma Sutra, and many other texts, and from this text, it becomes quite evident that Shivalabhacharya accepted Vishnu Swami Acharyatva and also founded Nirguna Shuddha Pushti Bhag, Bhakti Sampradaya called as Pushti Sampradaya. He also goes on mentioning this explicitly in his third canto of Subodhini, which is the commentary on the third canto of Shibhagavat. And in, in that, he clearly says, asmat pratipaditum nairgunye, which basically forms the foundation of Pushti Sampradaya. And thus, why would Shivalabhacharya want to become the disciple of Gadatar Bhatt, who was in turn the disciple of Sri Chaitanya? Because Shivalabhacharya, as per, as per the narration of Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami in his Chaitanya Charitamrut, Shivalabhacharya met Gadadhar Bhatt to make him listen to his commentary on Srimad Bhagavat. But very interesting to note that he met Gadadhar Bhatt 
after completing the Subodhani, which is the commentary of Sri Bhagavat. And within the commentary, Sri Vallabhacharya says that I, I propose the Nirguna Bhakti Marg and I accept also the Vishnu Swami Acharyatva within the text itself. So having said that already in the commentary, why would Sri Vallabhacharya now want to take a twist and accept being the disciple of Gadadhar Bhatt and accept Chaitanya Sampradaya when he himself has clarified in his commentary that he accepts the Acharyatva of Vishnu Swami Sampradaya and also because of Lord Krishna's wish he also established a Nirguna Bhakti Marg called as Pushti Bhakti Marg. Also Lord Krishna himself gave an order to Shivalabhacharya to write the most honest interpretation of Sri Bhagavat and bring out the ultimate essence from it as, in own, as, as said in his own words, artam tasya vivechitum nahir vibhur vaishwanarat vakpate ranyas tatra vidhaya manushatanum mam vyasavat shripati. Dattvagyam chakrapava lokar patur mudaham yasmadatoham muda gudhartha gudhartham prakatikaromi bahudha vyasasya vishnu priyam. I might have missed properly pronouncing some of the words and some of the phrases also I might have missed in this shloka. But the essence is. He himself goes on claiming that it was Lord Krishna himself who gave an order to Shivalabhacharya to give the Brahma Sambandha Diksha and establish Pushti Sampradaya. As said in Siddhantra Hasti Granth also. So why would he be otherwise be motivated to do out of his false and excessive ego as claimed by Krishna Das Kaviraj in his Chaitanya Charitamrita? This is a very bizarre claim by Krishna Das Kaviraj regarding Shiva Labhacharya. Let me give you a little bit more information about the main two branches within Chaitanya Sampradaya, which is the Braj branch and the Bang, uh, and the Bang Bengali branch. We call it as Braj Shakha and Bang Shakha. One of the writers and followers of Bang Shakha within Chaitanya Sampradaya, known as Goswami Pran Kishore, in his editor's note on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, very clearly calls out that the Braj Shakha and specifically the Bhav Panthi, Krishnadas, Goswami, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, has written the Chaitanya Charitamritam, which is filled with inconsistencies and written specifically with the malice and hatred towards Sri Vallabhacharya. And you can read that specific quotation given by Pran Kishore Goswami, who belongs to, who belonged to Banga Shakha of Chaitanya Sampradaya. He specifically, as I have highlighted in this slide in red color, he specifically called this particular group of people as Vidagd Vaishnava Mandali. And so I am going to refer this particular group as Vidagd Mandali. How interesting that major, majority of the followers in Bang Shakha within Chaitanya Sampradaya thinks that Krishnadas Kaviraj's texts are unreliable. Moreover, the incidents that were described by Krishnadas Kaviraj in his Chaitanya Charitamritam doesn't match or doesn't find any cross reference in any of other Chaitanya Charitamrits written in Bhanga Shakha. None of the authors of the biography of Chaitanya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mentions such type of incidents with Shiva Labhacharya and Shri Chaitanya, wherein Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu might have rebuked Shiva Labhacharya for writing an independent commentary on Shri Bhagavat Mahapura. Thus, to conclude, 
it is very unreliable and far from the factual analysis, far from facts that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would have ever rebuked Shivalabhacharya for writing a commentary on Sri Bhagavad. In fact, I believe that Sri Maha Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would have appreciated the Shivalabhacharya ji because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a, such a great devotee of Lord Krishna. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next misconception is people believe or have misconceptions as expressed by some of these people within the group who subscribes to this group within the Chaitanya Sampradaya says that, well, Shri Mahaprabhu Vallabhacharya ji requested Gadadhar Pandit to initiate him into the Chaitanya Sampradaya. Well, this is a pure lie and untruth. It is a false belief that Shivalabhacharya ji requested Gadadhar Pandit to initiate him. Here are the justification. Based on Shivalabhacharya ji's own words, Shivalabhacharya in his Siddhant Rahasya Granth says and mentions clearly that Lord Krishna manifested before him and Lord Krishna himself initiated him and ordered him to establish Pushti Sampradaya and initiated him with Brahma Sambandha Mantra. When that is the truth, why would Shivalabhacharya ji now request in turn at a later stage of his life to become the disciple of Gadadhar Bhatt or Gadadhar Pandit? It's also said, it is also claimed by this particular group that it was from Gadadhar that Sri Vallabhacharya learned about the Kishora Leela of Sri Krishna. Well, that is an absolute myth. Let me give you the fact. Before Sri Vallabhacharya met Gadadhar Pandit, he already wrote a complete commentary on Sri Bhagavat. And in that he clearly mentions Kishore Leela as an ultimate devotional experience and Leela in Falap Prakaran of Sri Subodhini, which is the commentary written on Sri Bhagavat by Shivalabhacharya. So when he already have mentioned this as Kishore Leela being an ultimate devotional experience in his commentary, why would one want to say that he in fact indeed learned this from Gadadhar Bhatt in his later stage of his life, when he almost, when he all, when already completed writing the commentary on Sri Bhagavat. So this is absolutely inconsistent, doesn't match with the historical facts. Let me go to the next point. As per Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, once Vallabha Bhatt, and they call it as Vallabha Charya Ji as Vallabha Bhatt, by the way, they do not even respectfully call Sri Vallabha Charya as Sri Vallabha Charya. They go on calling him as Vallabha Bhatt, not even having a Sri be prefix before him. But that's fine. That's absolutely okay. As per Sri Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, once Vallabha insisted Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to hear his commentary written on Sri Bhagavat. And seeing the false pride of Vallabha, Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rebuked Vallabha for creating an independent commentary on Sri Bhagavatam and not aligning to Sridhar Swami's explanation. By the way, Sridhar Swami is one of the original commentators, one of the early commentators, I should say one of the early commentators of Sri Bhagavad, which is a Mayavadi interpretation of Sri Bhagavad. Now, this is yet another monstrous attack questioning the character of Sri Vallabhacharya Ji and tagging Sri Vallabhacharya Ji as someone with a false pride. It seems this group of people wants to issue character certificate to all those people who has self-confidence and are genuinely ecstatic and immersed 
into Krishna Bhakti like Shivala Bhacharya. They simply cannot stand the effect and influence of the divine attributes from other Krishna devotees, it seems like. And again, trying to monopolize Krishna Bhakti. So the question that I have to, uh, I have for Chaitanya Sampradaya and this particular group of people within Ch Chaitanya Sampradaya, not the whole Chaitanya Sampradaya. And before I go into that question, let me also give you more explanation of why Shivala Bhacharyaji chose to write an independent commentary on Shiv Bhagavat Mahapurana. First of all, number one reason is he received the order to do so from directly from Lord Krishna. Why would he not abide by that order? Absolutely, he will abide by that order and that's what he did. Second, for a divinity to become really immersed into the Krishna Bhakti, you need to have you need to understand the essence of the Sri Bhagavata, which is the Bhakti Shastra, in its purest and, and its honest interpretation of it has to come out. Because if a devotee, if a Krishna devotee understands the Krishna's, Krishna's divine Leela based on the Mayavadi explanation, wherein the Mayavadi believes that Krishna himself is illusionary, the Jagat is illusionary. The Saguna Brahma is illusionary. The divine Leelas of Krishna is illusionary. When everything is illusionary, when the Bhakta and the Bhagavan, the difference between the Bhakta and Bhagavan is also illusionary, there is no whatsoever an option left out to purely devote towards Lord Krishna's feet. Because if Lord Krishna himself is illusionary, Lord Krishna's divine Leela is also illusionary as per Mayavadi interpretation, it kills all the possibilities for devotion. And thus Shivalabha Charaji, in order to abide by the orders given by Lord Krishna, chose to independently create a commentary on Sri Bhagavat Mahapurana. And when I say independently, it is not absolute independence, independent. It is based on the Veda Sri Krishna Vakyani Vyasa Sutrani Chaivahi Samadhi Bhasha Vyasasya Pramanam Chattat Chatushtayam Arthoya Meva Nikhilaihi and so and so vachans as quoted by Shivalabhacharya. Shivalabhacharya ji has created the commentary on Shri Bhagavat Mahapuran based on the Vedic scriptures, establishing consistencies across various different Vedic scriptures, aligning, reconciling, synthesizing all of these Vedic scriptures and creating an honest, coming up with an honest, pure commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam. And he even discontinued writing his commentary after receiving orders from Lord Krishna. That's why his commentary is, is not complete. So what does it suggest? He started off writing the commentary and stopped and discontinued writing the commentary purely based on Lord Krishna's wish. What is there for him to brag about? Why would he develop a false pride as falsely claimed by Krishnadas Kaviraj? And on top of that, just for the information, Shivalabhacharyaji never considered Sridhar Swami as his Swami, as quoted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the, as per the text of Krishnadas Kaviraj. 
As per Krishnadas Kaviraj's text, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu once said to Sri Vallabhacharya that Sridhar Swami is the Swami. Well, not with the case of Sri Vallabhacharya. Sri Vallabhacharya's Swami is not Sridhar Swami. He has that self-confidence. He has the guts to say that, no, we are not here to accept whatever interpretation that Sridhar Swami comes up with on Sri Bhagavat. We are committed. Sri Vallabhacharya is committed to bringing out the real essence, the honest interpretation based on the Vedic scriptures and not tag the Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna's divine Leela as illusionary or mic in nature. Sri Mahaprabhuji also says that he considers only one as his master in Krishna Shraya Granth by saying Krishna Eva Gatir Mama. Sri Vallabhacharya is only master, is only one and only one, which is Lord Krishna himself. So that's about how Vallabhacharya is. Now let, let me turn the table around and let me ask some of the questions to Shiva, to these people, to this faction of people within Chaitanya Sampradaya. If writing an independent commentary on Sri Bhagavat Mahapuran is considered to have a false ego, then will Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also rebuke Sri, Sri Sanatan Goswami, who also wrote the independent commentary on Sri Bhagavat Mahapuran? And he even goes on clear, clearing, uh, he also goes on saying, Sanatan Goswami also goes on saying that he won't. He wanted to write this independent commentary because Sridhar Swami had Mayavadi interpretation in the commentary. And he wanted to rebut that. He wanted to produce the rebuttal to Sridhar Swami's Mayavadi interpretation of Shibhagra. So the same rule should apply to Shril Sanatan Goswami. Will Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also rebuke Sanatan Goswami also, who belongs to his own sampradaya for writing an independent commentary on Sri Bhagavat as claimed by Krishna Das Kaviraj that he also did with Shivalabhacharya? We don't find any such incidents. Thus, it is purely manipulated text, is what I believe. Now let's go into the different dimension. Let's explore a different dimension now. As per the specific faction of these people, Vidagdha Mandali, and as per other texts within the Chaitanya Sampradaya, they have laid out the characteristics of an ideal Krishna devotee with this verse which you are seeing on the screen. It says, Trinadapi sunichena tarorapi sahishnana amanina manadena kirtaniyaha sada harihi. And which basically means that the one who always respects others, who is always tolerant to even those who are undeserving, and he's all, who is always immersed into, the, into chanting the name of Lord Krishna is the ideal Krishna devotee. So I believe and I assume that as per this, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also an ideal Krishna devotee, which I, I strongly feel that way. But based on what Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami described in his text about Sri Vallabhacharya and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it doesn't seem like it that he was able to portray the character of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also aligning to this ideal Krishna devotee characteristics. And let's see how, and this is the certification. Now I analyzed all the conversations and words, the usage of words and sentences in the text written by Krishnadas Kaviraj. The words said by Shiva Labhacharya as per him and the words from Shiva, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as per him. 
in his own text. And you are very mature, my audience, to decide who is more egotistic and who aligns more with that idealistic characteristics of being a Krishna devotee. Look at some of the words of how Shivalabhacharya ji behaved with Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as per his text. For a long time, he says, Vallabhacharya, he says, for a long time I have desired to see you. You means here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, my Lord. Look at the word, my Lord. He gives respect. Now Lord Jagannath has fulfilled this desire. Therefore, I'm seeing you, my Lord. Again, he gives respect to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One who receives your audience is fortunate indeed. Again, a respectful dialogue. Since one who remembers you is purified. Again, a respectful dialogue by Shiva Libhacharya. You have manifested the holy name of Krishna throughout the entire world. Again, a very respectful dialogue. Thereafter, with great submission and humility, Vallabhat invited Shiva Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to dine at his home. When Vallabhat saw all the devotees of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was greatly surprised. But in devotion, in devotion, he offered his obeisances at the lotus feet of each and every one of them. Look at the humility displayed by Vallabhacharya. And opposite to it, look at how Krishna Das Goswami has portrayed Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's character in his own words. He quotes saying, Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, one who does not accept the Sridhar Swami as an authority, I considered a prostitute. Look at the harsh word that he claims Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used. Again, another sentence. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rigidly declined to hear his explanations on Sri Bhagavat Puran. Now a question can be asked, why would Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who has achieved such a high stature, such a, achieved a status of the being in, always in an ecstatic situation and position, always immersed in Christian devotion, why would he become rigid? Why would he not be open to hearing to Vallabhacharya's Sri Subodhini, which is basically the divine leelas of Krishna? In fact, I believe that Sri Krishna Chaitanya, because of, his, because of his characteristics of such a great devotee he was, he would have looked forward to hearing such great explanations from Vallabhacharya sharp contrast to what Krishna Das Kaviraj claims to. Whenever Vallabhat entered the society of devotees headed by Advaita Acharya, he was like duck in a society of white swans. Again, what type of language is this? My dear Vallabhat, you do not know religious principles. These are some of the words that Krishnadas Kaviraj claims that they were said by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which I personally do not believe that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would have been this harsh. So you all can decide who is more idealistic in terms of being a Krishna devotee, in terms of having the right characteristics of being Krishna devotee, who was respecting, who was more respectful, who was more tolerant in these conversations, who was always immersed into the chanting the name of Lord Krishna. You can always, you can decide on your own. All right, let's take up the next topic. Let's move on. Let me also now focus specifically on some of the inconsistencies regarding the Mayavadi interpretation of Sri Bhagavatam as described by Krishnadas Kaviraj. Now, I find both the pro-Mayavadi statements said by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which basically sides towards liking the Mayavadi statement, liking the Mayavadi interpretation. And I also could find in sharp con contrast to this against the statements against Mayavadi interpretation from the same Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as 
written and described by Krishna Das Kaviraj in his Chaitanya Charitamrit. Let's look at some of the pro Mayavadi statements as said by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his text. Shridhara Swami Prasade Bhagavata Jani Jagat Guru Shridhara Swami Guru Karimani As per Krishna Das Kaviraj, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu considered Shridhara Swami as Jagat Guru. Okay. Shridhara Upare Garveje Kasu Kachu Likive. And then he goes on saying that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that anybody who, due to, his, due to that false pride, starts writing independently of Sridhar Swami on Sri Bhagavat. What happens to that? He goes on saying, Artha Vyasta Likhina Seha Loke Na Maniwe Sridharer Anugat Je Kare Likhana Sarva Loka Manya Kari Kariwe Grahan Sridhara Anugat Kar Bhagavat Vyakyana Bhimana Chandi Bhaja Krishna Bhagavan. So he goes on saying that you should follow Sridhar Swami's interpretation to, summary, to summarize this. He goes on saying that Sridhar Swami is the Jagat Guru. He accepts Sridhar Swami as his, his Guru. He also accepts the Mayavadic interpretation, seems like. Sridhar Swami's Mayavadic interpretation, seems like. Again, another pro Mayavadi statement says, as described by Krishna Das Kaviraj, as said by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Swami Namani Jai Janaveshyar Bhitare Tare Karibe Ganan. He goes on saying that you should not consider, if one, if one, if one, not, if one does not consider Sridhar Swami as his Swami, then it is considered as a prostitute. Sridhar Swami Nindi Nijatika Kare, Sridhar Swami Nahi Manet Garvadharaha. Those, again, he says, those who criticize Sridhar Swami's commentary on Sri Bhagavat, they have a false pride in them. So these are some of the group of uh, statements as Krishnadas Kaviraj claimed to have been said by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now let's see other, other side. There are other mutually contradictory statements within the same text as said by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his own Granth, in his own literature, in his own text. He goes on saying that Mayavadi Bhasha Shunil Hoy Sarvanasha. Mayavadi Bhasha Shunil Hoy Sarvanasha. He goes on saying that those anyone, those who follows the principle of Mayavada philosophy is considered doomed. Mayavadi Krishna Aparadhi. Mayavadi philosophers are the greatest offenders to Lord Krishna. Even the Sanatan Goswami goes on saying, Tad Mayavadi na karbu rita lipi naam Shridhara Swami charana naam Shuddha Vaishnava Siddhanta anu gata che tarhit yathava deva likhyate The, the meaning of this is Sridhar Swami has used the ink of Mayavad in writing the Shuddha Vaishnava Siddhant in his commentary of Bhagavad Puran. What does this say? What does this mean? You are criticizing Sridhar Swami. Clearly naming him Sridhar Swami Charananam Karburita Lipina Mayavadena. And even they further goes on saying, one day Chaitanya Devam Tam Tatta Vyakya Visheshataha Yo Asphora Yad Mesh Lokarthan Shidhar Swam Adipitan. I am publishing this commentary of Shri Bhagavat Mahapuran since Sridhar Swami could not bring out the essence of the Shri Bhagavat Mahapuran. So it's a mutually contradictory statements. One side you are saying you, Sridhar Swami is your Jagat Guru. One side you are saying Shridhar, you should always follow Sridhar Swami's interpretation of Sri Bhagavat Puran. One side, and on the other side you are, you are saying that you should never consider, you should never follow the principle of Mayavad philosophy while doing Krishna Bhakti. It is a greatest offense to Lord Krishna if you follow the Mayavadic interpretation of Bhagavat. 
So was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu not aware of the fact that Sridhar Swami followed the Mayavadi interpretation of Sri Bhagavat? I don't consider that. I don't believe that. I believe Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu definitely knew it, was definitely aware of such facts. And I, thus, I do not believe that these statements were really said by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, especially, specifically the, claim, the one claimed by Krishna Das Kaviraj in his Chaitanya Charitamrit. Further down, here are some of the explicit mentioning of Sridhar Swami being a follower of the Shankar theory of Mayavad. In his own words of Sridhar Swami, he says, Bhashyakar matam samyak tattad vyakhyatr giraha tatha yathamati samalud. Yes, Gita Vyakyam Samarambhe. Shri Mat Chankara Bhagavat Bhashya Katribhi Hiyati Prabandhena. Understand, he refers to Shri Mat Shankaracharyaji. And he clearly says that he's following Shri Mat Shankaracharyaji's Bhashyas. He clearly says that Bhashyakara Matam. Who is Bhashyakara here? Shri Shankaracharya ji is the Bhashikar of Brahma Sutra and he seems to be following that. He goes on saying that Srimad Chit Sukha Yogi Mukhya Rachitak, Rachitak Vyakhyam Nirikshya Sfutam. Look at this. He has referred to Chit Sukh Muni and Chit Sukh Muni is also Mayavadi. Tan Margena Subodha Sangraha vati, Vatim Atma Prakasha Vidham, Srimad Vishnu Purana Sara, Vivritim Kartayati, he Sridharaha Ayoginastu Agyaha Branti Gyan in the Jagadrupam Bhutamayam Pashyanti. Look at the explicit saying that he considered Jagat as Mike. And if Jagat is Mike, the he also considered the Sagun Brahma as Mike. Thus, based on all these facts, it can be clearly concluded that Sridhar Swami followed Mayavadi interpretation. And thus, it doesn't make sense to reconcile these statements of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as described by Krishna Das Kaviraj in his Chaitanya Charitamra. Thus, it is very unre unreliable source to understand even the character of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and obviously Sri Vallabhacharya. Anyways, anyhow, I am not concerned about, and I really don't care about what Chaitanya Sampradaya followers follow, which literature do they follow. I am not here to guide them and to advise them. That's not my business. I only care about bringing out the facts related to Shiva Labhacharya and clarifying the misconceptions. Now let's look at the some other aspects of some of the statements that as said by Chaitanya Charitamritkar, Krishna Das uh, Kaviraj Goswami by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Shivalabhacharya Mahaprabhu. One of the statements uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said about Shivalabhacharya Ji when they both met, they said, You are a follower of Vedic principles and are a well experienced performer of many sacrifices. He seems to be appreciating this. He seems to be respecting Vallabhacharya. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had such a high respect, why would he say disrespectful words, di diametrically opposite stand, and take the diametrically opposite stand in the same text? Thus, this whole text is questionable. 
Let's look into the another statement said by Raghunath Das Goswami from the Chaitanya Sampradaya and Vishwanath Chakravarti in his Shri Gopala Devashtaka Stotram and Shri Gopala Raja Stotram. And Raghunath Das Goswami says clearly, referring to Shri Vallabhacharya Ji and Shri Vithalanath Ji, he says, Tadamala Radayotham Prema Sevam Vibhunuvan Prakatita Nija Shaktya Vallabhacharya Bhaktya Suratu Hrdi Saheva Shri Shil Gopala Devaha. Raghunath Das Goswami says about Shri Vallabhacharya Ji that I pay ob obeisance to Shri Gopala Dev, which is basically referring to Shri Nath Ji in Nath Dwara. At that time, he was not in Nath Dwara, but right now Shri Nath Ji is in Nath Dwara. I pay obeisance to Shri Gopala Dev. They call Gopala Dev because the original name of Shri Nath Ji was Gopal. Shri Gopala Dev. And he refers Shri Vallabhacharya Ji as his personified form of his Shri Gopal Dev's Shakti. Look at the respect that Raghunath Das Goswami and Vishwanath Chakravarti is giving to Shri Vallabhacharya. So I really do not believe that Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would have said such statements about Shri Vallabhacharya as described by Krishnadas Kaviraj in his Chaitanya Charitamra text. So what is the conclusion? Let me conclude this. First of all, Krishna Bhakti can never be a monopoly of any sect, religion, or community. Sri Vallabhacharya Ji was neither the disciple of Gadadhar Pandit nor requested to become one. Sri Vallabhacharya Ji wrote Sri Bhagavat commentary due to Lord Krishna's wish in order to strengthen the pure devotion towards Lord Krishna that was previously pollute, polluted by the theory of Mayavad. Shri Vallabhacharya and Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu shared absolute cordial relationship with each other. All the sects and religions should strive for interfaith harmony and to be respectful of each other and its philosophies while being committed to one own religion. And at the end, always learn how always learn to respect your to respect others and always introspect your own self and never try to proselytize and then this is the conclusion from my end again this is meant to establish the cordial relationship between the two sampradayas so that a particular group of people cannot achieve what they are trying to achieve by disturbing the peace between the two sampradayas. And when I say a particular group of people, I do refer to some specific people like Krishnadas Gos Kaviraj Goswami, obviously, I'm referring to Upendranath, who has been writing on this topic in a prejudiced and biased way and attacking Shivala Bhacharajis and questioning the Vallabhacharajis character. By no means, I'm referring to the entire Chaitanya Sampradaya. I have high respect towards Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotion towards Lord Krishna. So with that, I'd like to end my session with, again, yet another Shanti part from Ved. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahavir Yankarava Vahai Tejasvinavadhitamastu ma vidvishavahai ye. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Jai Sri Krishna. Thank you.